The coal company would see that the body of a dead miner was delivered to the front porch of his home on a wooden stretcher. If the accident was an explosion that took his life, his body parts would be delivered in a bucket. At that point, the widow had 24 hours to find a replacement to fill the job left vacant by her husband's death. If she had a son over the age of 14, he had to go. If she couldn't find a replacement, she would be evicted from the home she rented from the coal company. In the 1800s, Irish Catholic miners living in the coal regions of Pennsylvania were not only required to pay high rents in the company-owned houses, they were required to buy all their goods from the company store at inflated prices. Oftentimes, men were paid in company scrip that could only be used at the company store and to pay their rent. After a hard week, a miner would often end up owing more to the company than he was paid. They had fled Ireland to escape famine and religious persecution, only to find themselves in equally desperate circumstances. The experience of the Irish Catholic miner in the 1800s in the Pennsylvania coal regions was akin to slavery. A proud people, they stood up to the most influential men in America at that time, the powerful magnates of the coal and rail companies. Their actions in standing up gave birth to unionized labor and the protection of the working class in the United States. The owners of the coal and rail companies wanted to break the unions. Soon the men who had been union leaders would find themselves facing various criminal charges, including murder. Many to this day believe the leaders were framed in an attempt to break the union. The accused were commonly referred to as Molly Maguires, thought to be an underground terrorist group. No evidence exists that any such group operated at the time and that the label was part of the conspiracy to frame them. In the trying of these men, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania abandoned its duties to see that due process was afforded to the accused. The only thing the state provided was a courtroom and a hangman. The men were arrested by the company-owned security force. They were put on trial. The prosecutors were attorneys hired by the coal and rail companies. No Irish Americans were permitted on the jury. The jury was comprised mostly of German Americans who could barely speak or understand English. Today, as historians and scholars look over the transcripts of the trials, it is widely agreed that no evidence was presented linking these men to any of the crimes they were accused of. It is thought to be one of the most egregious miscarriages of justice in the history of the United States. More than 20 men who stood up for the rights of their fellow workers would be silenced by the coal companies at the end of a rope. As Alexander Campbell was being led from his cell on execution day, he rubbed his hand on the dirty floor and placed his handprint on the cell wall, proclaiming it would remain forever as a testament to his innocence. Efforts over the last 135 years have been made to wash it away, to plaster and paint over it. That section of the wall has even been replaced, and yet the handprint always returns. In 1975, Scientists from Wilkes College studied and examined the handprint in depth and concluded that it defies all earthly explanation. Its chemical makeup and mere existence cannot be scientifically explained. From somewhere behind the radio, with the music of Johnny X, I'm the American Storyteller. Those 
calling you There's no more time to sleep The children all grew up unlearned They never went to school They never learned to read or write They learned to spin and spool Every time I close my eyes I see that picture still When textile work was carried out By babies in the mill Get out of bed, little sleepy day And get your bite to eat the factory whistles calling you There's no more time to sleep Old timer, can't you see that scene? And the years gone by when children worked in cotton mills, the same as you and I. I know you're glad that times have changed and kids can have some fun. Now grown ups go. And do the work that babies used to run Get out of bed, little sleepyhead And get your bite to eat The factory whistles calling you There's no more time to sleep 